A reading now from Luke's Gospel, the 19th chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus entered into Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, could, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He is gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. And on All Saints Sunday, what better day to remind ourselves that all can become saints. The story of Jesus and Zacchaeus begins with the information that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Now, he was rich from using his position, doubtlessly, to exploit uh, the oppressed Jews. That is, he was a Jew who was Seen as a traitor, he was in cahoots with the Roman occupying forces. He had a position where he was allowed to collect taxes from the Jews, and he was allowed to take uh, some of that for himself. Basically, he could uh, finagle his way to great wealth that way, of course, at the expense of his fellow Jews. This is, friends, a conversation about justice, especially the poor and the exploited by the end of the story being repaid for their losses when Zacchaeus has a change of heart. This is also a conversation about conversion and salvation. In that day, rabbis apparently argued about whether it was even possible for a tax collector to exercise true repentance. Rabbis argued about whether it could even be done for them. I mean, that's how vile, that's how, that's how evil and traitorous they, they were seen. Enter Jesus and Zacchaeus. It is indeed possible. No one, perhaps, no one is too far gone. Jesus is teaching us to be saved, to be made righteous, to be brought into the family of faith. Question answered. But the people don't necessarily like the answer, do they? They begin to grumble about where Jesus is going, who Jesus is spending his time with. They, they don't seem to like the answer because they don't like the tax collector. Who don't we like and thus maybe keep intentionally or not from this table, I wonder? Meanwhile, Jesus goes right to the most despised person in town, and he follows Zacchaeus to his house, and Zacchaeus, we might uh, believe then, follows Jesus all the way to his heavenly house. One of the saints today 
and forevermore. It's one of the most dramatic and unexpected uh, conversions in Scripture, uh, kind of lost on us because of how familiar we probably are with the story. It's total surrender, as we said last week. We were talking about how we have to surrender, that stewardship is about surrendering. Yes, that's right, we're still in the midst of stewardship season. How stewardship is surrendering ourselves, surrendering our lives to God. That does, Zacchaeus reminds us, include our lives. That does include our finances. Often that might be the last thing that we hold on to. Zacchaeus does not. Now, Zacchaeus' conversion is also visible, is it not? He can't escape being uh, made a bit of a spectacle because he wants to see Jesus, and Jesus certainly sees him, and he is brought to the attention of his whole community, isn't he? But when Zacchaeus has his change of heart, what he does next is entirely visible. It's in front of everyone in town. It's not for show. It is really what's happening in his heart. But it is made known, made seen in what he does next. How he responds. As one scholar I was reading this week put it, um, what change, when, there, when there are changes within us, there must be something seen from the outside. There must be an, out, an obvious outward noticeable effect. We can't always be quiet or still about this change that has taken place, about what God has done inside of us. And so in that spirit, friends, today, leaders of the church, elders, deacons, members of the um, stewardship committee are invited to bring forth uh, their pledges. Uh, This is one week before Dedication Sunday. Next week is Dedication Sunday. Sunday when the whole congregation will bring forth their pledges and their time and talent sheets. Uh, But as a a demonstration today of our leaders' uh, faith in God, trust in the goodness of God, and uh, faith in this church and uh, where this church is moving and heading, um, are bringing forth their pledges today. And so um, I invite those of you who have prepared to do that, Uh, to come forward with me and place those in the basket. Again, we do this not as as a matter of show, uh, but more as a demonstration uh, that we do um, trust in the Lord and that we do want to set an example for the rest of the congregation to um, to see that we have prayerfully considered what action would be visible in us in expressing our faith. Thank you, friends. To all of our friends here today, we hope, uh, our hope is that you will pray as we have and hear God calling you to support the good work happening here at First Presbyterian Church. Uh, with your time and talent, and certainly with your treasure in the coming week, you can make that pledge. Um, Next Sunday will be your opportunity to do so. I I do want to challenge you. We must all respond as we hear God for ourselves. And what you write down on any piece of paper is certainly between you and God, but whatever you do, whatever your response is to what God has done for you, May it include others, maybe who previously were excluded. May it represent a surrender to God's will for you in your life. And may it lead to a visible, observable action on all of our parts. Amen.